Phyllis, I'm going to begin with you because as I was getting ready for this conversation, one of the things I was struck with was something that you said about the whole process is that it was a meditation on choice, uh, both the political, um, the personal, and everywhere in between. And I really appreciated that because I think with stories like these, the temptation, or I should say the trip would be to let the medicine mix too much with the food to where you taste it. But this film really balances that in such a great way. And I know that was from the intention from the beginning. So talk about how you balance the choice with how you wanted to make it feel like a cinematic's tale. Yeah, thank you. That's a, that's a great question. And we all talked about this a lot. Um, in the beginning with Robbie, who sent me the script, um, I immediately saw that there was a, a way to make a film about a very serious set of topics, abortion, women's rights, um, collectivism, which is something dear to me, um, with a lightness of touch that would hopefully speak to the widest possible uh, range of audience members. So we did set about to do that quite purposefully. And in doing it, I know that you enlisted the incredible talents of these women in front of me, but before you even got there, it's, it, it started with Robbie and, and the script and this journey. And I do have to say, how did you sort of start with that assembly, like with, with first Phyllis, but then more importantly, the ladies we're about to speak to next? It started with really um, Elizabeth, um, who had read the script, and I'm friendly with her manager, and she had called me and said she responded to the script, and you should speak with her. And so Elizabeth and I spoke, and I think we saw eye to eye about you know what we wanted to do and the story we wanted to tell, and we both thought it was very important. And, um, and then ultimately, uh, Phyllis, um, Phyllis's agent called me and Phyllis was passionate about the script and it just so happens that Elizabeth and Phyllis knew each other and had developed a, a project in the past together. So serendipitously, it all came together. Um, they spoke and we decided to go on this journey um, and that was probably three or, three or four years ago and COVID happened. And But we managed to pull this amazing cast together, uh, Sigourney and Grace and Wumi, and um, I just feel so fortunate, yeah, to have had just these strong, powerful women that were just very committed to making this movie in very, you know, difficult uh, circumstances. Elizabeth, I have to bring it to you because obviously I'm very familiar with your acting work, but also your work as a producer and, and especially just the franchises that you have been a part of and they are big and they are brow like rowdy I will love you for forever for pitch perfect thank you very much <laughs> but with this one it is clear that this was a project that not only were you passionate about telling it not as a woman but also I think as a producer to say at the time when you started it this was not the flashpoint that it is now, and don't you feel like, girl, like the clock is is wrong at the wrong time, but it's also incredibly right that you have essentially given this incredibly cinematic footnote for people to then be inspired by to change looking back. So how did that work out? The fact that when you started this, this was not after the Dobbs decision, and now about to go into theaters, it has really reframed it. I, of, of course, the timing is, um I don't think there's a right word for it. You certainly wouldn't use serendipitous. That's terrible. Um, I think, you know, I remember being told um, by men that I love, um, don't be hysterical. They're never going to overturn Roe v. Wade. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> I just feel like there was a, uh, when I read this script, I thought it was a great coming of age story for a 40 year old woman and a political awakening for somebody who was asleep in their life, somebody who never thought they would have to seek abortion health care, having to do so, and then really learning about what that means for others who have to walk that road, and the judgment that she carried until she had to walk it. And I really felt like there was an opportunity here to invite a lot of people who could maybe relate to that into the film. And I had great partners the whole way who wanted it to be, she's named Joy. And I just remember thinking like, there has to be a sense of effervescence in this. There has to be a sense of a woman making a life affirming choice. And 
um, an empowered choice and really taking control over her life. And I feel like we've done it really beautifully in the movie. And she can't do it without the help of these other incredible women. So the, the, I, I don't do anything on my own. So <laughs> I really felt like the collective in it was the collaborative in it, the process of making it, it all came together. Yeah, I was just going to bring it there because as much as Joy is a reluctant activist, I think no woman wants to be an activist in this fight, obviously, but, but Joy in particular in this really obviously wrestles with the choice and then leans into it heavily. But to have the sort of other side of that in these incredible and fierce warriors that have been in the fight already, um, played by you, Wumi, and Sigourney, it's just incredible to watch. And I have to say, um, Mrs. Sigourney Weaver, because I could never say your name to your face like that otherwise, um, but I, I have to say this, I've watched you fight aliens, but watching you fight this fight was probably the most inspiring and terrifying thing I've ever seen, and it was such a joy to watch. So how was that sort of, again, just shifting it because it, it's so fierce, but it is ever flinching. And I know that as we, we were saying back there, this was not, you did not want it to be as on time as it is, as prevalent as it is, as timely as it is when you set out to join this project. Yes, um, I felt very lucky to be asked to join this ensemble. Um, I loved Virginia. She's so out there, and she's so direct, and she's so funny. And um, I was alive <laughs> in, uh, during you know, all the anti-war protests for Vietnam, and you couldn't help noticing, and it's true in the films that have come out more recently, that women were sidelined. And I think that was very hard for Virginia, and I think when she found this, it became all important to her and her joy in it um, and in helping women and the sisterhood um, just gave her all the energy in the world to keep doing this. Um, so uh, I, I, you know, now is it, even though I was alive before Roe versus Wade was passed, there's such a big difference, which is that the women weren't demonized, the women weren't criminalized for needing an abortion. Um, it's such a huge change from the way things were. Um, and it, that breaks my heart and shocks me to my core that this is this lack of compassion, lack of reality, lack of understanding and respect for the dignity of women is just something that shocks me every day since this happened. And hopefully this little film can, you know, as Liz says, invite people in, remind them perhaps of, you know, who's really at risk here. And, um, and hopefully within 18 days, it will make a difference at the polls. Wumi, well, I definitely want to speak to your character in particular because I, I will go ahead and say it. When I was watching this at Sundance and I saw your character come on, I have to say in a film like this as a black woman watching, you're like, all right, where are we going with this? <laughs> where are we going? And I was so, so like relieved, pleasantly surprised, and then eventually just stunned by what this film does for you and for that character. And I, I liked it in particular by just how she did not flinch with the inequity. Of, of this story. And I know for you, just the story was shocking, but was that shocking when you saw how they treated the character within this, again, very rich, white, female world that she was navigating? Um, I don't think it was, no, I don't think it was shocking um, because there has always been a tension between the feminist movement and the intersectionality of it. And so that, um, that, that combat we have, I don't think it's the only one we've had. And I think Gwen is just so necessary in reminding a room full of white women that there are other people that need them. Um, 
So it wasn't it wasn't shocking. It was something that we really. Um, I guess the only shocking thing I have is like the movie said it. Like I know it happened, but the movies don't always say it. Like they flinch yeah. away from it. Yeah, we we spoke about it a lot. We we all did actually because we felt like this needed to be addressed. That she's the only black woman in the room, and how does she feel about it? And what is she going to do about it? And what's she going to do with? these amazing women to make sure she's not the only black woman in the room. Um, and she, that black and brown, low-income people get the service and the help and the sisterhood that they need to. Um, yeah. I don't really need to add anything other than it was fire. Um, um, I will say this though too, with with Gwen and, and with Virginia and with all of these women is that they served as an inspiration, obviously, because their names and, their, and who they represent are actually names that are being echoed literally in the fight today. And Grace, obviously your character shows so much of that in, in the time frame. But I have to think on set, you're not even thinking about that. You're just thinking about, okay, I got cast in a movie with Ripley. Like, this is, <laughs> this is like the dream. Uh, this was pretty dreamlike for them just telling me to do this. But I do have to say, so how, how is that? Because I cannot imagine, I literally cannot um, even think about walking on set that day. <laughs> Well, actually, Sig was very warm and welcoming to me and becoming the character and because she was alive in that time and she had uh, known women who had gone through a similar thing. Um, we got to talk about how teenagers back in that day were not really involved in politics. They were not really uh, welcome to speak about it or learn about it. They were kind of expected to just go to school and be children. Whereas now I think we, we involve them a little more and we want to teach them more to become a powerful adults and making their decisions. I wish we could speak for more time, but I want to thank uh, the Academy. I want to thank uh, Roadshow Attractions, and I want to thank all of you. Thank you so much for, for watching. Thank you. Thank you.